Hello and thank you for joining today's event. Introducing Six Howard Mathematica faculty sponsor, Professor Terry Adams. Now I would like to introduce Nanette Coleman. Nanette H. Coleman is a PhD candidate in the Sociology Department at the University of California, Berkeley and UC National Lab Los Alamos Fellow. Her work sits at the intersection of the sociology of culture and organizations and focuses on cybersecurity, surveillance, and privacy in the U.S. context. Specifically, Nanette's research examines how organizations assess risk, make decisions, and respond to data breaches and organizational compliance with state, federal, and international privacy laws. Nanette holds a Master of Public Administration with a specialization in democracy, politics, and institutions from the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, and both an MA in Economics and a BA in Communication from the University at Buffalo SUNY. A non-traditional student, Nanette's prior professional experience includes local, state, and federal service, as well as work for two international organizations and two universities. Nanette is also the lead organizer for Six Howard Mathematica. Thank you all for joining us for this discussion with Professor Terry Adams. I'll begin by introducing Professor Adams. After that, she'll offer a general overview of her research trajectory to date, what she has done and is currently doing. From there, we'll begin, we'll spend some time learning about her recent grants, new relationship with Six Howard Mathematica, and what is to come. Finally, we'll conclude by discussing her path to the professoriate. If you've seen other discussions on this channel, including Six at H5, Past, Present, and Future, and Bit by Bit with author Matt Salganik, you know that I'm particularly interested in elevating discussions on the topic of diversity in computational social science. Today's discussion will reflect that as well. Let's begin with Dr. Adams' bio. Alongside being a professor, Terry Adams is the interim chair of the Department of Sociology and Criminology at Howard University and interim director of the NOAA Cooperative Science Center for Atmospheric Science and Meteorology at Howard University. Dr. Adams is also the lead investigator of the decision support team for the Building Extreme Weather Resiliency through Improved Weather and Climate Prediction and Public Response Strategies Project, supported by the National Foundation's Partnership in International Research and Education Program. Dr. Adams' research takes an interdisciplinary approach to examine issues that have both theoretical and practical implications. Her specific research interests include emergency management, policing, gender studies, and the impact of trauma and disasters on individuals and organizations. Her most recent work centers on the decision-making process of both individuals and organizations in the face of natural disasters. In addition to her academic work, she has served as a research consultant for a number of agencies and nonprofit organizations, including the Police Executive Leadership Program at Johns Hopkins University, the Williams Institute, the DC Metropolitan Police Department, the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, the Prince George's Center for Youth and Family Research, the Young Ladies of Tomorrow Incorporated, and the Fraternal Order of Police Metropolitan Police Labor Committees, just to name a few. Welcome, Dr. Adams. It's a pleasure to have you with us today and an honor to have you as one of our two founding faculty sponsors for Six Howard Mathematica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank let's you. Jump in, thank you. Let, yeah, let's jump straight into a discussion about your research and research trajectory. Okay. So uh, this part of our discussion is meant to offer our listeners a sense of your prior scholarship. So can you tell us about what you've studied in the past and what projects are currently in your pipeline? Okay. Uh, well, in, in your uh, reading of my bio there, you kind of hit some of the highlights, but uh, in general, I study how people and organizations respond to natural disasters, specifically uh, first responders, emergency managers, and the public. And, and I've had the um, privilege or the blessing to have collected data in the U.S., Chile, as well as Japan. Uh, currently, I'm gearing up to examine the impact of social and cultural factors on behavioral responses to COVID-19, and I'm seeking to collect data in the U.S. or continue to collect data in the U.S., in Europe, and in Asia. And um, I'm in the process of actually narrowing down which countries in um, Europe and in, in Asia that we're, we're actually going to focus on. So what? I'm what? really intrigued by really understanding what makes people make the decisions that they make in the midst of catastrophic event. 
And can you tell us a little bit about what types of lenses you apply to that work? So um, I, I think I, among a lot of our listeners, are excited to 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 see a, an academic of your stature focused on COVID-19. So can you talk a little bit about the lenses that you use to a, a approach uh, COVID-19? Sure. So uh, most of the research that I've done in the past, I've employed both the use of quantitative and qualitative uh, methods for collecting and analyzing data. So while I'm interested in understanding their behavior responses, I, and some of that you can pick up through uh, quantitative data. And so that's why I'm interested in, in learning more about um, computational sciences and, and how it can be used in social science. Um, I'm also just as intrigued to understand the particulars associated with social phenomena that you really can't get to without doing some kind of qualitative data analysis. And I, am I correct that you have a, a, a few grants and a few other hats that you're wearing besides professor right now? Can you tell us a little bit about your work with NOAA, your, your interim chair right now, of the, sure. of the department there at, uh, at Howard? Can you, can you tell us about the many hats that you wear? Sure. So, uh, as you mentioned, I'm currently serving as the interim chair for my department, the Department of Sociology and Criminology, and I'm also serving as the interim director of the Noor Cooperative Science Center for Atmospheric Science and Meteorology. Uh, in the main, I, I have been in the past serving as the deputy director of that research center, and um, we'll go back to that position when the new director steps forward. But it's been a grueling year <laughs> serving in both roles, but I've learned a lot and um, I actually kind of enjoy administrative work, which I never thought I would before. Can you can you tell us how you found your way to studying natural disasters? You know, I, I, people ask me that question with privacy and cybersecurity often. It's just mm -hmm. how did you how, how did how did uh, how did you find your way here? Uh, actually, it was Hurricane Katrina, uh, like many people around the. Country, I was drawn to folding of the disaster, and I couldn't believe there were actually U.S. citizens stranded without help for so long. And so I wanted to explore how did that happen uh, and what could be done to prevent something like that from happening again. And so that drew me to it. And then just the fascination of understanding how people manage through crisis events, um, it, it just fascinates me. So, and we're all kind of living that right now as we speak in real time with COVID-19. And I'll often say that people, we won't really truly understand how it's impacted all of us as a society and as individuals until after we get over this. So, um, yeah, that's that's basically how I got into it. So I, I have a mentor uh, that that uh, you used to always ask me, you know, alongside what I'm doing now, sort of what are the green shoots? What are the little things that are poking their heads up, little okay. flowers that, that maybe we, we may want to study down the road? And as at, at keeping in mind that you have so many uh, things on your on your plate now that are just cutting edge and important research, yeah. what's down the road uh, for you? Are there are there things that you're interested in in studying uh, that that you haven't? So what else is in your pipeline that you haven't had a chance to to get your hands on yet? Uh, well, the um, collecting data uh, in Europe and in Asia is something that I'm really excited about. Um, I I think it's important research that needs to be done. Uh, at this point, I'm I'm on the search for money to do it. So, if there's anybody watching <laughs> who wants to point me in the right direction or offer some support, I'm I'm here. I'm ready. Uh, but I, again, unfortunately, because of climate change, we know that we're going to continue to see, uh, you know, large scale severe weather events and and possibly other natural disasters. You know, the, the scientists have said that we're going to see another pandemic. Hopefully, we've learned enough at this point. In terms of a country that we will respond differently, and I do believe we will. But unpacking that, unpacking um, not just the individuals and communities' response, but also uh, looking at how the state has responded, and then at the federal government level, I think are are those shoots uh, that you mentioned that that I'd like to explore at some time. 
And I, I'm, uh, I want to support and help you in finding that money that you need. So if anyone is out there and, and, and would like to support uh, Professor Adams's research, please be in touch. Uh, and um, uh, so let, let's talk about computational social science uh, a little mm -hmm. bit. So how do you see um, the, the, the work that we're going to be doing this summer uh, uh, connecting with, with the research you've done so far and, and thinking towards the future? Mm -hmm. I think it connects in, in important ways. I'm really interested in exploring big data sets. So data sets from like the CDC and the World Health Organization. I'm also interested in exploring um, how do you model a behavior responses. And in fact, I just uh, completed a, a proposal with a, a computer scientist at Howard University and some other uh, scientists where we hopefully uh, if we are funded, we'll be able to, to explore that. Um, again, how do people to, to be able to um, predict behavior responses to uh, similar and other kind of natural hazard events or, or is what we're intending to do. Can you, can you tell us um, uh, a little bit about what it excites you about uh, mm -hmm. uh, six Howard Mathematica this summer? You're one of our two founding faculty sponsors. Uh, okay. So what uh, what uh, what excites you about about what is to come this summer? Uh, what excites me about what is to come this summer is having the opportunity to offer training to our students. I'm really uh, get excited about providing new opportunities to students. That's one of the reasons why I do the work that I do. So uh, when I am doing research, it's not just about myself, it's about bringing along students to train them and having the opportunity to have uh, the program provide, uh, you know, students an opportunity to expand their knowledge base and to hopefully move their research along. So I, I think it's great for our department and our students and just for the university overall. Thank you. So uh, we're going to, to finish our time together by learning a little bit about your path to the professoriate. Okay. Uh, so uh, I, I don't I don't take for granted uh, that that everyone watching this video um, will already be in a PhD program. Uh, mm -hmm. And for those of us who are in PhD programs, uh, that that um, that that we're we're always you know sometimes you don't see the water you're in as a fish, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it yes. would be helpful to understand how you found your way. Uh, okay. to the work that you do now uh, and uh, what you studied along the way. I, I think uh, we'd just like to get to know you. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, well, my story I think is interesting because I first set out to, you know, when, when I first started in college, I wanted to become a, uh, a politician, <laughs> actually. Um, but I did some time on Capitol Hill and I realized that that was not for me. It wasn't the person I worked with who was Kwasi Mfume, uh, who's back oh. in Congress now. He was actually excellent and treated me like a human being, um, <laughs> which is not always, which is can be rare for interns <laughs> on Capitol Hill, but but I digress. Um, that's what I wanted to do, but it was somewhere either in my junior or senior year, I took a drama course. And it was something about that course and the professor and what I thought was his life that just seemed appealing to me. So uh, I decided then instead of law school, I wanted to go to graduate school. Um, and that's really, <laughs> it was just one professor who seemed really cool, who was laid back, uh, really made me think about how I wanted to live my life. And, and so that's really what, what drew me to pursuing a PhD. In terms of my research, I, I first started off looking at homicide. Uh, and uh, I, I tell this story because I, I, I hopefully it will, it will encourage others who hit brick walls from time to time. I kept writing uh, a proposal that I thought was a really good proposal and, and I just couldn't, couldn't get it funded. And uh, then Katrina happened and it made me think about different research questions and that really took me down a different road that just opened up uh, a lot of different opportunities for me. So I share that story to say that sometimes if you keep hitting a brick wall, for some it's important to just continue to push through that. But for others, it might be important to rethink your path and think of, if, is there something else that I could explore? Is the universe telling me something that I need to listen to? And that's what it was for me. 
And I, I don't know about you, but the, the creativity of that process is one of the things I love about being an academic. The, you know, maybe I could climb the wall this way or go around to the right, right. or you know, get a jackhammer and go through the wall. Right. Um, and and exactly. I also can identify very deeply with the fact that one professor often makes the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, so so whoever that uh, drama teacher was, I, I'm I'm sure they're they're exceptionally proud of of, of your progress <laughs> and the and the fact that you're being that professor for others now. Uh, I definitely am inspired by you and 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 very much so appreciate that you you took time with us today. Are there any questions that I did not ask you that uh, that uh, you would you would like to answer? I guess the one question um, would be what keeps me motivated. Uh, and, and for me, I would say it's the students really looking for opportunities to come um, with growth experiences is what fuels me. Also, just my natural curiosity, and I think you hinted on that a little bit ago. You know, I'm just curious about the world. So just wanting to know more. I often say, you know, if I would had to retire, I don't know, you know, retirement is a way at least in my, my perspective in terms of my <laughs> life. But uh, I would still want to do this work, you know, because mm. I'm still curious. I still there's still questions that I want to have answered and I still want to work with students. I still want to mentor students. I still want to seek out opportunity uh, to fund research and to expand my knowledge base as well as the students. So I would be remiss if I did not ask you about your work as an administrative, uh, as, as an administrator uh, okay. at a research center. So what that entails, sort of your path to serving in that role and the benefits and sacrifices that come with the job. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, so I got into serving in administrative roles when I was asked to serve as an assistant dean uh, back in 2016, 2017. And at that time, Time, you know, I was with folks in academia would say, I would never do administration, like, ha uh -huh, you know, <laughs> who would do that? Uh, but upon, you know, thinking about it, you know, I like challenges. So I was like, okay, why not? Uh, and through that experience, I discovered that I had skills that I didn't know I had. Um, mm. So that led to the opportunity to serving as the uh, uh, director of the Reese Center, the Noah Proctor Science Center for Atmospheric Science and Meteorology. And, um, you know, that has a whole lot of challenges when you're working um, at a research center versus actually serving as, as administrative role within a college or university. So both are interesting. Um, I guess I'm just one of those people who like to take on challenges. And so uh, it, it's a lot of work, particularly when you want to do your research to, to mm -hmm. try to do both. But uh, I'm just... I just like challenges. And so I foresee myself um, continuing on in, in some form or fashion in both administration and uh, research. But if I had to choose between the two, I, I would always choose research first. And we are so appreciative that you're bringing your creativity and uh, love of administration and, and also your uh, exceptional professorial chops to our work this summer with Six Howard Mathematica. So I would like to thank you um, again. We're very honored to have you uh, as part of our team uh, this summer. And I'd like to also thank all of our viewers for watching. And I'd like to remind you to visit our website. To join our email list, follow us on Twitter like us on Facebook and follow up if you have questions. Uh, the deadline is fast approaching uh, for six Howard Mathematica uh, and uh, we hope to see you this summer. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.